It was in my third year of theology, preparing for priesthood, sitting in a class taught, co-taught by a priest and a nun. And they were asking, what would we put forth as a model for parish life? What image or what model would we present? And so I said, family. And the nun jumped on my case very quickly. No, you cannot use that as a model. It's a lot of families, you know, people have problems in families, there's pain, there's uh, history, there's all kinds of things. You can't use it. It would be too difficult and too painful for people to embrace. Well, I respectfully disagreed with her then, and I even more respectfully disagree with her now. Because all of those issues that she talked about in family are present in parish life. You cannot choose your family members. You're born into a family, it's not your choice. Well, you may choose a parish, but you can't choose who belongs there. You can't say, I'll belong, but you, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. It doesn't work that way. And all the dynamics of different, difference of opinion, uh, different ways of approaching things, all those things are our presence in family life and in parish life. So even more so now today, I say that yes, I think family is a way of looking at parish. Now there are a lot of people that want to have a happy family. I would say there's only one place you're guaranteed to find a happy family. At a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and if you don't get the joke, there's a traditional meal at Chinese restaurant Chicken, pork, shrimp, and vegetables in a brown sauce, it's called Happy Family. So, yeah, you're guaranteed at a Chinese restaurant to find a Happy Family. Other than that, you're not going to. And if that's your goal, is to have a Happy Family, you're probably not going to succeed. Because of all those dynamics that we've been talking about. I would like to propose that instead of looking for a Happy Family, if you could look to a family that has meaning, that you know what your meaning is in that family, or that you know what the meaning of your family is for other people. My parents have been called home to heaven. My sisters are spread across New York State. So the chances of any one of you meeting a member of my family here on earth since they are nil, I don't mind sharing with you that I grew up in a dysfunctional family. And we always joke that my family is the one that put the word fun in dysfunction. <laughs> That's us. Yep. And amidst all the stuff, all the messiness of family, the search to find meaning existed. Having ministered over 12 years now up at Monterey Correctional Facility, it's one of the places where I find most evident the meaning of my dysfunctional family. I will sit one-on-one -on -one with an inmate, and after one or two meetings with him, I will start sharing with him what his family was like growing up and what he experienced. And those guys will sit there and look at me and say, how do you know that? That's not in my records. I've never shared that with you. How do you know that about me and my family? And I can sit there and look at him and say, because your story is my story. And you have just become a silver lining to the cloud of my dysfunctional family. Because I can sit here and understand you. And you know that I understand you. And will not. And I can tell you that you can still have meaning in life in spite of your dysfunction. I'll ask them, I'll say, look, I'm a priest. Do you think that's a pretty good profession? A pretty good way to live life? Yeah. So with my dysfunctional family, if I could still become a priest, what can you become? Someday you're going to be sitting talking with someone. Maybe your son, your daughter. Maybe a, a brother, your big brother program. Maybe as a teacher, one of your students, as a counselor, 
one of your clients, or maybe as a priest, one of your parishioners. And you're going to be able to look at that person and say, I understand you. Here's your story. And when they ask you how you know that, you'll tell them your story is my story. And then you see the light bulbs go off for them, saying, wow, maybe the messiness of my family, maybe the stuff actually has meaning. Not necessarily happiness, but meaning. Today in the first reading from Sirach, we hear instruction how to live within family. And the author of Sirach is wise. The author knows that it's not always going to be easy. The author says, look, as your father ages, do not revile him. Even if his mind should start to fail, do not leave him. My father had several mini strokes. His mind was failing. I would just smile and say, yes, Dad. Okay, Dad. Why was I trying to be right? Why was I trying to prove my dad what the truth was? It wouldn't serve a purpose. And as you have dealt many of you with aging parents and the issues, you know what that's like. It's not easy. It's messy. There's a lot of stuff connected with it. But there's meaning when you act in the way Scripture advises. Today, we can look at the Holy Family. We just celebrated the fact that Jesus was born to us. But look at how He was born. He was born away from home. He was born in a stable. And over the centuries, we have made it look pretty and nice. But basically, he was born in a barn. There's nothing, nothing nice about being born in a barn and having your bed be a feeding trough. But Jesus being born there and laid there has brought meaning to it. So even though it's still a messy barn, Jesus is there. And now it means something. And in the gospel today, we hear that the Magi have been warned to go home by another route because Herod is trying to kill the Christ child. Joseph is warned in a dream to flee to another country. And Herod ends up murdering 20 to 30 infant boys because he's afraid of the newborn king of the Jews. That's not pretty at all. To know that somebody wants to kill your son as an infant? But again, there's meaning there when we recognize the presence of Christ. That's what we celebrated on Christmas. Jesus born to us. His name shall be Emmanuel, God with us. And to find God with us in the midst of the messiness and the stuff of life gives it meaning. And once we understand the meaning, Sometimes that can lead to happiness. But if happiness is the first goal, you will probably never succeed. But with meaning, with discovering the presence of Jesus in the midst of the stuff, there can indeed be peace, understanding, and love. St. Paul tells us how to discover the presence of Christ in the family. Those words that we hear today in his letters, letter to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on heartfelt compassion. Put on kindness. Put on humility. Put on gentleness. Put on patience. Bear with one another. Forgive one another. And over all these things, put on love. My friends, when you live that, you become the presence of Jesus in the midst of family. Whether it's your biological family, the family of chosen people, the family of church, the family of community. You become Emmanuel. You become the presence of Jesus with all these people. And that can bring healing. And that can bring peace. It's rare that you truly find a happy family because every family goes through stuff. But every family can be a holy family if you choose. Doesn't mean there won't be pain and suffering. 
Don't mean, doesn't mean that there won't be difficult issues to deal with. But Jesus is there. He's with you. He's in you. And he can give it meaning if you want it, if you allow it. So, yes, I, I still respectfully disagree with, with that nun that was teaching in class. Sure, parish life is messy. It's got stuff. But we can be holy. And we can bring meaning to this parish and this community if we choose to.